Hey everyone, it's Brett from Hope to Prosper. I'm here with Maria, got my dogs, Millie and Bailey. We're just out in the hills, just cruising along, uh, just having a good day, nice summer day. Anyways, uh, today's subject is, uh, are you planning to relocate for retirement? All right, thanks for coming along. <laughs> I wanna to talk today about uh, relocating for retirement. Uh, I was talking to a good friend of mine last week and he's planning to relocate to Portugal with his wife in a couple of years. Uh, I was kind of surprised. Uh, I have another friend. He's planning to ro relocate to Italy with his wife. Um, my dad, he was an expat. He, he retired on a small island in Micronesia. He loved it. So uh, There's no way he could have afforded to retire in California at age 55 on what he had saved, but he was easily able to do it in Micronesia. Uh, I have other friends who have retired recently to Florida, Arizona, Idaho, and even Utah. So relocating is not something I'm interested or planning to do, but I thought it'd be fun to cover this important, important subject on retirement. So let's start with the top five reasons that re retirees relocate. And this is information from uh, AARP in 2023. And here are the, the top five reasons. Um, number one, lower housing costs. Uh, anybody who lives in California or... Uh, New York could understand this. And 60% of the people who move, uh, they sell in a high price market and then they move to a lower cost market. It's kind of like house hacking. And uh, that's why Californians aren't very popular because um, I, know, I know somebody who sold a house here and then they bought three houses in Wyoming. Uh, or they buy, you know, they jack up the property values in places like Oregon or Arizona. Um, because they just show up with so much money. Um, so lower housing costs, that's the number one reason. Uh, number two, lower taxes. Once again, if you live in California or New York or New Jersey or whatever, uh, you can understand that. You know, Not having state income tax or not having state income tax on retirement income, that's a big thing. And believe it or not, that's a big thing for people with... Uh, with um, High incomes, you know, uh, people with high net worths, uh, they're looking to get out from under some of those taxes. They've worked their whole lives in those states and paid all those taxes, and uh, now they're not really interested in doing it with the money they have saved up. Uh, number three, moving close to family. Uh, I can understand this. Uh, 20% they move just to be closer to family. Usually it's kids and grandkids and things of that sort. So um, here's another reason. Number four. Better weather. Um, we're lucky in California. One of the re people aren't moving out of here because of the weather. It's it's the cost. But everybody's moving to the Sun Belt states, um, and they had the biggest influx influx of people over sixty. Uh, people are just some people are just tired of being under snow. So and then here's number five. This is something I I hadn't thought of, but uh, it makes a lot of sense. Some people just want a lifestyle reboot. Uh, they moving towards smaller towns and rural areas. Uh, they're trying to get away from the stress and the traffic and the crime of the big cities, uh, in addition to the cost. And so they're moving to a quieter, more peaceful uh, type of life with, you know, more community. So so those are the five five top reasons that retirees are relocating. And, and by the way, I just want to say thank you to all my new subscribers. Welcome to my channel. Thank you to my subscribers who have been around for a while. Uh, my name is Brett, and this channel is about early retirement, skills, and adventure, and I'm glad to have you along. Thanks for coming. So let's next let's talk about the top 10 states retirees are moving to. Uh, this is an important subject, uh, and as we talked about earlier, uh, sunny states seem to be popular. So number one is Florida. It's been number one for a little while. I think it has a good, good uh, mix of... Uh, you know, sunshine and, and affordability, uh, unlike California and some of the past popular states. Number two, Arizona, and that's kind of like the Florida of the West. Uh, people who are looking to get out from under the snow of the north or or the drizzly north northwest, uh, they like Arizona. Um, so number three, South Carolina. The Carolinas have been popular lately. Uh, you know, they're trending, trending up. Number four, Texas. Uh, this surprised me because uh, last year was down to nine and now it's back up to four. So Texas is popular once again. I think once again, Texas has a affordability as an issue. Uh, you know, you can, you could afford to go there and get a nice place, uh, unlike some of the other states. Number five, North Carolina. 
So um, I can understand why this is popular. I was I was just in the Carolinas last year, and it was nice. Number six, Georgia. That's new on the list this year, but I think people have been moving to Georgia forever, especially the Atlanta metro area. So no big surprise. Number seven, here's a new one on the list too, Alabama. Um, people are uh, moving to Alabama, and that's that's kind of a surprise to me. Uh, but you know, I'm not surprised because of the affordability is probably such an issue. Number eight, Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee's been popular for a while, a uh, popular destination. Uh, that was another place I went last year and enjoyed. Um, it's slipped down the list a bit. Um, probably affordability is going up, but it's still a wonderful place to live. Uh, nice people. Number nine, Nevada. Uh, that's Like I said, that's not a surprise at all to me because uh, people have been moving from California to Nevada forever. They don't have state income tax. And places like Vegas and Reno are really popular um, from people from Southern or North NorCal. Uh, and then finally, this one is a surprise to me, uh, Kentucky, number 10. Uh, this is new on the list, and um, I was surprised. You know, I thought people were moving mostly away from Kentucky, but it makes sense for retirees if you're not having to uh, find a job in a rural area. Uh, Kentucky's really pretty, really beautiful. So, so I just wanted to make a note that some of the previously popular destinations, such as Idaho and Maine, uh, they're, they left the top 10 this year. And it might be because they're cold, might be because affordability went up, I don't know, but uh, you know, if, you, if you have any insight into that, leave a comment. But I had some friends that moved to Idaho, they love it, um, but you know, they were looking for four seasons, and uh, some people aren't. When you're retired, uh, that snow can really be a bugger. All right, so let's talk about some moving demographics. And this is um, sourced from the, the Census Bureau's 2023 population survey. And these are just kind of little factoids. Um, so almost 30% of interstate retirement moves, they came out of California or New York. And, and that doesn't surprise me at all. The, the affordability is just uh, through the roof in California and New York. And people are looking to get out of there. And especially... High net worth people, um, you know, wh why, why would you g give 45% of your, uh, you know, your retirement income to taxes? It's just kind of crazy. And, and then also, you know, the crowded, the crime, the, um, the traffic, all of those things uh, aren't, aren't nearly as uh, popular when you retire. Uh, so m number two, most moving retirees are likely to be unmarried. Now, this is surprising to me. And then this is also um, something that's new. Uh, it's kind of like 10% since just from last year. So 56%, the most ever on record in 2023, uh, who, are, um, who are moving for retirement are unmarried. And I know a couple of people like this. They just, uh, I guess if you're single, it's easier just to pull up stops and move on. Uh, you, you're not wor worrying about the whole family situation. You only really have yourself. And you might be interested in a new adventure if you're, if you're single. Uh, as opposed to a couple. So that's that's an interesting factoid. Next, um, most moving retirees are likely to be younger. Uh, this is another surprise. 37% are under 65. That's not a surprise, but 23% are under 55. And that's a big surprise. Um, I, I didn't realize that many people under 55 were number one, retiring, and number two, moving. So that's that's interesting. And here's something that didn't surprise me at all. The median household income for retirees who are moving away is 17% higher than the typical um, typical income in America. And that doesn't surprise me at all. You know, if you have money put away, if you have means, um, then, you know, these things are a lot more possible. They're easier just to pull up and move. So I wanted to talk about the reasons why I'm staying in California, and we're not relocating. You'll probably see my wife shaking her head. We're not relocating. And it's funny because I, I watched a video put out by Joe Kuhn yesterday, and I had already written this, and it's almost like word for word for the reasons I'm staying is the reasons that Joe Kuhn's staying um, in Indiana. So I thought that was interesting. So number one, of course, is family. You know, except for my sister who moved to Texas, my family's all here. Uh, my two brothers live in town. My kids live in town. Uh, my granddaughter lives in the next town. My parents and my other brother, they live about 20 minutes away. And so my whole family lives here. And so 
I'm not interested in pulling up stakes and uh, being in the middle of nowhere without my family around. You know, that may change. My parents are old. Uh, they're elderly, I should say. And, you know, my brothers may move away. Uh, one of them's thinking about Arizona. The other one's thinking about Tennessee. So, you know, I, I might wake up one day and be the only one in town. Uh, but as long as my kids and my grandkid are here, uh, not very likely I'm going anywhere. Number two, adventure. You know, I retired to adventure. And um, California has it. You know, we got we got the beach. We got the desert. We got the mountains. We got the forests. We got the valleys. We, we kind of have all of the geography you could possibly want. We got nine national parks, which is the most in the country. We have 139 state parks. Um, you know, I've lived here my entire life. I'm third generation. I've only seen a fraction of the state. So I plan on seeing a lot more of it during my retirement. And it's really easy just to drive around California and enjoy it. And another thing that's nice about California, you have a lot, a lot of BLM land. And, uh, you know, you, you can kind of... Uh, uh, you can kind of camp in places that, uh, you know, other states, all that land's private. And you can't just pull your van out or your truck and, you know, go to the Alabama Hills or um, some of the places in the coast. So anyways, so adventure. Adventure's a big deal for me. And then another thing is um, community. This is an important thing. You know, I love where I live. I live in San Clemente, California. It's a little beach town. And when I say little, it's 65,000 people, which probably seems like a lot to somebody else, but considering it's in the middle of Orange County, which is 3 million people, um, it's a smaller town, and it feels like a small town. And I've lived here 40 years. I can't walk into Walmart or a restaurant or anywhere without knowing people and talking to them. And so I love it here. Uh, my wife loves it here. My family loves it here. Uh, we're all well-known. And uh, I just can't imagine pulling up stakes and moving somewhere else where I don't know anybody. So I love my community. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, is finances. You know, California is an expensive place to live and the taxes are outrageous. But if you've lived here a long time and you have your house paid off, it could be a pretty affordable place to retire. Uh, the property taxes are capped at 2% increase per year. So they don't go sky high like other places like Texas and stuff. You do have income, state, uh, income taxes, but they're pretty reasonable unless you're high income. So when you stop working, uh, my taxes went down quite a bit. And so it's actually affordable to live here under certain conditions. Uh, one thing is not affordable is if you try and move here and buy a property, and then properties are just outrageous right now, and, and then, of course, the corresponding property taxes are going to be crazy. So moving in here to try and retire is difficult, but if you've lived here for a while, it's not a bad place. So what about you guys? What are your plans? Do you plan to relocate in retirement? You know, please let me know in the comments what your plans are and what you're thinking and what you've decided. Are you, are you going to relocate or are you going to stay put? And if you are relocating, where are you going? Is it an exciting destination uh, or somewhere, someplace a little more quiet for you? All right, so let's wrap this up. In conclusion, relocating in retirement, it's a big decision and it has serious consequences. And if you sell your house in an expensive market like California and you move somewhere else, you're probably never going to be able to move back. I know a couple that that happened to where uh, they went, they moved to Florida, they hated it, and then they had to like move out into the sticks to come back here. So you got to really be careful. Uh, my recommendation is try out your move in advance. You might not like it. Try your dream destination on a temporary basis. Rent some stuff, rent your stuff out. And then before you sell your house and make the whole thing permanent, try it out. Okay, that's our walk. We had a good time. Dogs are hot. We're hot. Had a good time. It's beautiful out there. All right, thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed today's subject. And uh, I wish you all health, happiness, and prosperity in your lives. And we will see you next week on our next big adventure.